Coach Musk talked about it just a minute ago um, about you guys. He thinks you guys are an underrated defensive team because a lot of the main talking points nationally about y'all are typically offense related. But what what do you think is key to the, the strong showings on that end, you know, down the stretch of the season? Um, honestly, just having strong-willed guys that are willing to work every single night that really want to win and are willing to take on the challenge each and every night. You know, when it comes to guards, we have guys like myself and Debo Davis that love to step up and, you know, almost fight for who's going to guard the best guy. And then from the big spot, we got guys, Justin Smith, Moses Moody, with great length and athleticism that can keep up with almost anybody. And even off the bench, and Desi Sills and uh, J.D. Note and you know, guys like Jalen Williams who just sacrifice everything they have for our team. So just honestly, the sacrifice piece from a whole team standpoint, but just the will we have and just, you know, the the care that we have to take that step every single night and just trying to, you know, do whatever it takes to get a win. And speaking of Jalen Williams, what has jumped out to you about his growth throughout the year and just his coachability and mental toughness as a young guy? Uh, Jalen Williams, man, he's he's grown every single game, which you expect freshmen to do. By the end of the year, you know, they're going to be sophomores. So it's just his understanding of the game and just his ability to be our anchor, you know, behind us, the way he talks, the energy he brings, and his ability to be in great position to take charges. And just, you know, he does a lot of things to hold our defense down as a whole. Our next question is from Curtis Wilkerson. Hey, Jalen, just curious about your impressions of Oral Roberts from when you played them in December to now. What what growth have you seen in them and what stood out about the run that they've been on? Um, their team kind of like some of the teams you see coming out my old conference. You know, they make a run in the in their conference tournament to get here and they just stay hot. You know, I think they're riding either six or seven game win streak. And, you know, they have two really good guys in their guard and one of their power forwards that – just won't allow them to lose right now. They've beaten some very quality opponents. And honestly, it's a dream coming, you know, as a kid from mid-major, coming from that knowing that that's what you aim to do. You know, the whole season you talk about making it to the NCAA tournament and shocking the world. So the fact that they've been able to do that so far is a testament to just how good they are as a team. Our next question is from Christopher Heidel, Herb FM Sports Radio. Hey, this is Chris Idell from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. Um, you guys played them earlier in the year, December 20th. Um, did they look differently? Yeah, I know you were trying to talk about it a couple of minutes ago. Did they look differently on offense, or did they look or they were completely different what he you see in film? Um, I think when you look at the film, they do like a completely off uh, different offensive team. They have a different type of confidence to them. You know, when you're winning the games at the rate they are and beating the teams that they've beaten on paper, the Ohio States and the Floridas, those are, you know, household names in college basketball. So, you know, it comes with a certain confidence where you can put up those numbers against those teams and perform well, I think. So that's definitely something that you see a little bit more. I think they're taking a lot more threes. You know, they lead the country and three-point field goal percentage, so that alone, you have to play to your strengths. They're getting to the line a lot as well, being able to control the pace of the game. And they're a great free throw shooting team too, so you expect them to play to their strengths. Our next question is from Michael DeCourcy. Yes, Jalen, I wondered if you could tell me if at any, uh, I'm from Sporting News, um, I wondered if you could tell me at, if at any point after you guys beat Texas Tech, did you think at all about the fact that you had been able to make it to a point that your father and your brother weren't able to get to? Did that occur to you at all? And connected to that, does Jada get bragging rights over everybody since she was there a couple of weeks ago? Um, actually, Jada does have bragging rights for the time being. We give Jada all the props, all the credit. We're definitely full-fledged behind her, but I'm not done yet. Uh, I actually talked to my brother last night and had to make sure, like, did you make it to the Sweet 16? And, you know, having those bragging rights over my brother and my father is something I like to have as far as my college success so far with the success I've been blessed to have winning championships in Northern Kentucky, then coming here and having the year we had, being ranked top 10 in the country. My father had done that before, but nobody's ever advanced like myself. And, you know, my brother has his rebuttals being in the NBA and stuff. But, you know, with, for the time being, I do have bragging rights as far as college goes. Thank you. Our next question is from Bob Kravitz. Yes, 
A little bit to the development you've seen with Justin Smith throughout the course of the year and what ways he's improved. Uh, Justin is uh, one of a pro's pro, honestly, when it comes to his work ethic and how he take care, takes care of his body, man. You don't see too many guys have surgery in the middle of the season and be able to come back and have the year that he's been having, especially here down the stretch between SEC tournament, NCAA tournament, and how he finished the season. He's a detrimental piece to our team and honestly has a hand in us winning every single game, man, every single night. He just does so many great things on the court on both sides of the floor. He offensive rebounds with the best of them. He's an exceptional athlete, can move his feet, guard one through four, one through five. And really just, he's, he takes on the role along with myself as just a leader on this team and a great voice that we have. And I think a lot of the younger guys amongst even some of the vets look to him for you know a lot of direction. Our next question is from Nathan Thompson. Hi, Janine Linson, Nathan Thompson from Fox 23 in Tulsa. Uh, Oral Roberts, obviously the biggest underdog left. Does it change your mindset or, or maybe how you prepare or motivate yourself as players when you're taking on a big underdog, a 15 seed rather than, say, like a two seed Ohio State? Um, at this point, we're in the Sweet 16, and even when you get to the NCAA tournament, everybody's really good. You know, seeds are thrown out the window, obviously, with the teams that they've beaten, especially. You can't look at that. This is a faceless opponent. This is a seedless opponent. I think they're playing as good as anybody in the country right now, so you can't take them lightly. I think we're actually a little more locked in just because of what they've been able to do so far. Like, with a 15 seed able to beat a 2 seed, you don't hear about that too often. And to go on to beat, I'm not sure, I think Florida was a 7 seed. You know, when teams do that twice in a row, <clears throat> they feel like they have the utmost confidence just to beat anybody in the country, let alone a 3 seed. So we take them just as seriously as any other team throughout the whole season. And we're almost even more locked in, as I said before. And does it help you know that they're a quality team? Because you played them already. They had a double-digit lead at halftime. Yeah, we are. Like, we look back at it, too, as far as just who we thought was going to win. We knew they'd have a shot because they gave us a lot of trouble at home. And I know even when we looked before we played them the first time, we knew that they gave certain teams trouble or – you know, close games or even scares, you know, leading up to us. So we respected them then. We respect them even more now. Our next question is from Sports Reporter. If you could identify your name and affiliation before you ask your question, please. Yeah. Hey, Jay. It's Bob Wolf from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. How you doing? Good. Um, you? Hey, you guys have won several games this year, including that RU game where you, you trailed by double digits. And of course, you've done that in the first two tournament games. What what do you think about that? And uh, what what's the key to you know you fall behind, but then you you win a lot of these games? Um, honestly, just being able to lock in, especially down the stretch. You know, we talk about games when we were down double digits. Just being able to get stops at the right time, lock in on offense after you get those stops and get great shots, sharing the ball as a team, and just knowing that we have the pieces and the ability to come back in those games and just keep willing ourselves back and never losing hope or belief and just being able to continue to move forward and knowing what's at stake a lot of the times. And also, I want to ask you about the, the weight vest practice between the LSU and Alabama road games. I know that probably wasn't a lot of fun at the time, but it seems like it really had the desired effect that Coach Musselman wanted. What do you remember about that practice and, and what would you say about the way you guys respond to that, even though the Alabama game was tough? You've really turned it around since then. Uh, we all came together and just knew we did not want to do that again. That was definitely one of the hardest practices I've ever endured. And just really just, it really tested us, you know. At that point in the season, you know, you reach your breaking point. You lose a game by 30, you get embarrassed like that on TV, and then we go into Alabama after the hardest practice, and he even threatened us that we would have the uh, even worse practice after that, and we get blown out by Alabama right after. As a team, you have to make a decision. You're either going to come together or you're going to just separate and you know let the whole season go to waste. And I think we did a great job of coming together and staying together, really, and just gelling even more and being there for one another even more. I think that 
the team, it made us stronger as one, you know, as a unit. We knew as players that we had to take it upon our own shoulders and in our, into our own hands to just really go out there every single night and give it everything we got because we don't have too many of these games left and we didn't want to be embarrassed anymore. Our next question is from Olivia Ray, Wish TV. Shaylin, I'm doing an odd story today on the coaches dressing casual on the sidelines this season. Um, I wanted your opinion on everyone dressing casual, like your coach now, and if you think maybe it's up to their shoe game a little bit, I've, I've noticed that's what they've added to their repertoire. So you often see some of these coaches with their million dollar suits, you know, they're tailored, you know, they're, their shoes even are a little bit alligator, you know, just the stuff you see on TV normally with some NBA coaches and stuff, but coaches now are stepping outside the box and having shoe game at, like their players would have off the court. And, you know, you acknowledge that a little bit and just you like to see them out there comfortable all the time. You know, it gives, especially Musk, you know, he likes to be really active on the sidelines. So it gives him ability to be even more animated or even after the game, he can celebrate how he really wants to for those who saw last game celebration. And just only thing about it that I don't like is when you win championships, you go dump the cooler on the coach and you look to ruin that million dollar suit or that really nice suit that he has. So, you know, him being more casual and comfortable takes away a little bit from that. Our next question is from Emily Giambalvo, Washington Post. Hey, Joan, I was just curious um, from a player perspective, what has it felt like to have been now been in Indy for quite a bit? Um, does that take a mental toll on you as a player? And I know some players have said it almost felt like a giant AAU tournament. Did this, like remind you of anything you experienced? Uh, no doubt. It reminds me a lot of like when I was younger, just Louisville being at Nationals. And there's it reminds me of the convention center even because all these courts in you know, teams are in there practicing. We're in these four surrounding hotels or so, I believe. And, you know, we're not allowed outside. Being an indie, especially for the NCAA tournament, I don't think you get tired of it any, but you definitely you definitely want to stay here, I think. You know, it's like it's tolling mentally, but you don't want to get tired of it because you don't want to go anywhere. You want to be here till you want to be one of the last teams here. I think what motivates you even more is seeing the teams that aren't here anymore or – we moved hotels the other day, and it's like we're the last of a few. You know, you only see so many teams here on out. And, you know, to keep seeing teams go and still seeing us here is definitely a blessing and just something you could tilt your head at and always remember for the rest of your life. Our final question is back going back to Bob. Okay, yeah, sorry the sports report. That's what some of our IT guys did. Hey, Jalen, I haven't broken down film the uh, first or you game, but I'm – I assume you probably had something to do with with holding um, a, a Smith down. What do you remember about that game defensively? Because that was one of his lowest scoring games of the year. I remember just he was very capable of pulling up from range. We worked on that a lot in practice. I think we were a little too soft on his pick and roll coverages. Like when I look back at the film now, and I think we'll definitely have to just adjust to that, especially when there's a high ball screen with him and Avenor just keep them under control and be able to push up through the screens, get through as much as we can, and just be able to communicate on the ball and, you know, use our size and length and athleticism to our advantage. And if we do that, I think we can have a pretty good chance at slowing them down. You know, with the rate that he's scoring at, you know, leading the country in scoring is going to be tough, but I think we can do, I think we can slow him down a little bit. I mean, you guys slowed him. You held him to 11 the first game. Was, was there something in particular you guys were doing to hold him down like that? Um, I think just really early pickups. I think we made him guard a little bit. So, you know, making him play on both sides of the ball, maybe making him a little tired. But, you know, the first game is the first game. You know, he probably didn't, doesn't feel like he had his best night and he probably wants to come back at us. So we're going to leave that in the past and just, you know, worry about this next one. 